Hello. So today we're kind of wrapping up the traditional nativity story and taking a look at the wise men. Uh, heads up, this blog post, the written version is extremely long. I put a lot of history in here and there were so many things that I personally found of interest and you may or may not, but the post is pretty long. Um, but it's, I think, full of some pretty interesting information. I wanted to highlight three points in the video, though. So quickly, the first one is that Herod calls on the scribes to tell him about the prophecy of where the Messiah is supposed to be born. And sort of, um, ironically, I guess, the Pharisees end up being the first group of people who affirm Jesus Messiahship by explaining to Herod where he's going to be found. And of course, later he is found there. And uh, Pharisees, for being the antagonists of the story of Jesus, for the most part, it's just, uh, it's just a small little irony that they were the first ones that kind of confirmed that he really was the one who was foretold. Secondly, uh, I found some really interesting information about what it might have, what reason the Magi might have had for following this star and for thinking they would find a king uh, by following it. So there is uh, this super, people have studied using NASA technology, this super rare celestial formation where I'm going to look at this really quickly. Uh, so the king star called Regulus, which is another name for this quote, King Star, uh, let's see, crossed the quote, King Planet Jupiter within the constellation of the lion or Leo, which was king of the animals three times. Um, as, as astronomers and studiers of the stars, they uh, may have been able to predict that that would happen and we're looking for that occurrence, which would have happened in um, March of 5 BC. And uh, so they would have started heading that way if that's something they were anticipating. But uh, so interesting, king, king, and king. And as far back as language goes, that constellation of the lion has always been uh, called the constellation of the lion in every language. So it is, um, uh, it also had a traditional associated with the kingly tribe of Judah. So the lion of Judah, and there he was. So that may have been why they were anticipating a king when they were looking at that star. Uh, and that occurrence would not happen, uh, or will not happen and again for another 40 million years. So it was extremely rare. And uh, they would have considered themselves, I assume, very fortunate to have been able to see it. Um, but as they got there, of course, they were struck by um, exceeding joy and awe at the sight of the Messiah. So uh, it seems like the Holy Spirit spoke to them, showing them um, who they were really in the presence of, and were told that they worshipped him so they certainly recognized uh, more than just his kingship or royalty that he was, uh, uh, they recognized his deity. And then finally, I want to point out that this is the eighth time that we see someone or a group of people get a um, divine revelation. So we have uh, God came to them in a dream and tells them not to go, um, go back to Herod. So it's just, again, you know, we saw several times or a couple of times, Mary ponders in his, in her heart, all the things that are happening to affirm Jesus Messiahship. And here we have again, another person who, uh, gets this sort of revelation or a gra rather group of people who get this revelation, um, from God surrounding Jesus's young little life. So anyway, I thought all those things were pretty interesting. And there's a whole lot more in the article about um, what else was kind of relevant about their visit. So enjoy it. And I'll see you next time.